What we're talking about today is circular saws. These have replaced hand saws. They're ubiquitous. They're everywhere. And a few years ago, skill saw manufacturer, they made the transition from an aluminum housing to a magnesium housing and they produced the Mag 77. It's significantly lighter than what previously had been the sine qua non of skill saws. There are lots of other people besides skill who manufacture skill saws. And frankly, they want to call them skill saws. They're in a bind. Makita makes a good hypoid drive saw. Rigid makes a decent saw. Bosch makes good saws. There are direct drive where the blade is on the right-hand side of the saw. Worm drive puts the blade on the left-hand side of the saw. Way better for a right-handed guy. But none of them are as versatile or as uh, nimble as the Skill Mag 77. All of these saws can be purchased new for less than $200. They range from about $100.5 to $200. Bucks. These things you can find on sale for $179. I wouldn't get anything else. So let's talk safety with the skill saw. First of all, foremost, keep a hold of this thing. When the blade binds, it's spinning away from you, which will push the saw towards you. So if you have any questions about your ability to hold, use two hands. Every time you bring the spinning blade into contact with something immovable, expect it to push back. These want to eat your lunch. First principle is, you try, generally, to never have any more blades sticking below the table than you need. So the calibrations that are marked onto this brace are red at this notch. Smart. So you can eyeball instantly about how much blade you have sticking below the table. There's about a quarter of an inch. There's enough to get through a two by. With gradations at three quarter, five eighths, half inch, three eighths handy when you're cutting sheet goods. And there are two or three things I do right away. The thing that I never do right away is remove the guard. Don't do it. There are times you may have to block that thing up, but never, never, never remove the guard on a skill saw. There are too many tragic stories of life-altering injuries that only happen because somebody thought it was smart to take the guard off the saw. Blocking the guard up is dangerous. As soon as you do it, everybody on the job site is at risk. But here's how you do it. Put a 16 penny nail in there. Okay. But that is such a vicious weapon. Pull it out, you're closed. So there are other calibrations on this tool. Obviously, for the bevel, it ranges from zero to 45 in five degree increments. Pretty handy. This is the first thing to get wrecked when you drop your saw. They've recently added the calibrations across here, which tell you how far the zero mark is from these marks. One, three quarter, half, quarter, zero, and coming over the other way. What that does, it enables you to make a long rip pretty darn straight without snapping a line. Now this little mark right here is the mark that represents zero when the saw is set at a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna rip an inch and a half off the edge of this board. An inch and seven sixteenths. Pretty good. Didn't take any time. I can do the same thing with three and a half inches. So what you just saw me do with my hand down against the edge of the table is something I don't recommend you do. It facilitates a nice straight cut. It takes real concentration and it's a good way to lose your fingers. 40 years I've still got all 10 of my fingers. But uh, you have to concentrate. One of the ways time is wasted is in waiting for the blade to come to a stop. So I just threw away two or three seconds. Now I could have set the saw down with the guard on, that's reasonably safe, but it still bugs you. So you can get in the habit of releasing the trigger just as you emerge from the cut. No wasted time, we'll do that again. Let the inertia of the blade carry it on through the cut. As soon as a piece is cut, you can drop the saw, pick up the board, and go to work. Thank you.